morning, Greendale Hi, I'm Dan Harmon. I'm Gillian Jacobs. I'm Andrew Guest. And I'm Joel Chevy. I can't <laughs> Joel. Joel McHale. Hey, here, watch. Yeah. There's John Oliver John came Oliver. on his one week off. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, this is the first time we've the seen him after the pilot. John right? yeah. Oliver. See the Luis Guzman headshot over there? <laughs> uh, what do we say about this episode that hasn't been said by scholars and <laughs> oh, historians? <laughs> Wikipedia. Andrew Guest and I wrote, this was the, we wrote a lot of this episode on the set. This, this story went through a lot of changes <laughs> at many stages. We could talk about the whole born to leave aspect. There was a whole other storyline. We were trying to incorporate. Yeah, that was one of the things I love about this John Oliver character. This originally in the story, the, there was a thing going where he had just had a paper published. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> about uh, called Born to Leave, which is a was a paper uh, that had figured out why women always leave men. That they, they had, they had <laughs> oh, no right. control over it. Right. Um, it was clearly his own axe that he was grinding yeah. in his paper. Cheers, Mash, Faulty Towers, Taxi, whatever that was. A lot, a lot of people didn't get that, but they didn't. No. Yeah, I remember on Twitter a lot of people were going, "I don't get it." The hard way in Q and A. Yeah, Luis Guzman is on a private jet from Hollywood because he can't wait to have that conversation. There's a there's a friend of mine that I loosely base Abaddon, who one of one of the personality traits that he has is he's a very credulous guy who believe. Almost anything you say, and I remember one of the stories that I that he told me about is how one of his friends had convinced him that Lindsay Lohan was coming over to clean the apartment. So I was coming over to uh, to party with them, and that he therefore needed to clean the apartment and buy them a six pack of beer. And I, I was like, wait, and I was like saying to the friend that was doing this to him, I'm like, how can you do that? And he's like, he, be he believes anything. Like, and 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 I was like, is that true? You believe anything? And he's like, yeah, well, I don't know, I to, you know. <laughs> He couldn't help it. He wanted to fight it. Um, and he came in and read. He uh, read for the part. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. Well, maybe you should spend five hours sculpting that in your face. All right. Last night I graded your test. I'm sure you want to know how you did, right? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell you until I find out who did this. What is that? That was the first time Starburns talked. That oh, was yeah. his first line. My name's Alex, dude. And an entire <laughs> an entire network shuttered. Yeah, <laughs> there was a whole exchange between them. It was really funny. Like there's a longer exchange where he's like, "My name's Alex, dude." Yeah, well, maybe you should have carved that. And like, hey, but why don't you just teach? Oh, why don't you shut up? Like, hey, nobody, nobody cares about you. <laughs> and, and, and it's like a great dramatic scene between these characters. Uh, network hated it. Everyone always hates everything. Have you explained That's who true. Starburns is already in one of these? Who Dino is? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I did, yeah. In his first appearance. He's so funny. That also can get a lot of Andrew Dice Clay uh, impersonations during that day. Yes. Yeah, it's funny to find out that your friend of fifteen years or so, like so this other guy like he the just looks like Andrew Dice him. Clay. <laughs> right. That's the that's the reference point yeah. for I never <laughs> perceived <laughs> Dino as an Andrew Dice Clay type. Uh, Shirley's hair is really different. Mm. It is evolved. We slowly are building Shirley's hair like the elephant <laughs> man builds that cathedral. Uh, <laughs> so over oh, right. time. So 60 years. We're going to put so. windows in it. And then we're going to move our pillows and die. Well, I'm and sleep. I'm not trying to look like I'm not. Well, I may be a genius, but I'm not. Well, we should talk about this episode. Oh. Now. I was trying to see which one it was. Well during the silence. Well, for, for, through the first six, we were t we were dealing with each character and and Jeff, right? And this right. was Britta's this episode. This was Britta's thing. Yeah, you're right. That's a good point. Yeah, first six, the idea was, let's focus on one character per episode. Have them each have a little story. Pierce was first with the, uh, the Spanish play. This is Britta's episode. This is where we find out she's, she cuts and runs. That's her thing. Right. Yeah, that's my thing. That's her thing. She's a skank. She cuts and runs. <laughs> yeah, I'm a skank. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a skanky, cheating hoe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you are selling yourself very short. No, no. This is this is what the people want, right, Dan <laughs> Harmon? Oh, my gosh. Cage fighting? I know. It's what I want. I know I'm still negotiating with the people. <laughs> I'm learning something new every day. This isn't a table. <laughs> I love this part. That's funny. Remember when we used to study Spanish? 
Aw, look oh, at that. They love each other. Grin. Look at that little look at that grin. It's There's like love. the poster for the first season. <laughs> Supposedly, <laughs> Tell uh, you. if we've done our job on the DVD, one of the special features is the original scenes from this storyline. There's two scenes with Pierce behind the piano when Annie comes in. And so one of the bonus features will be to take a look at those original versions of the scenes, uh, which we'll talk about when we get there. But it's all teed up by this idea that Pierce is, as I had mentioned previously, he's a sort of mockery of me, my my writing workflow. <laughs> is to shut myself in and uh, procrastinate and yell at everyone who comes near me <laughs> and tell them I'm a genius, even though I'm not. I would say you're a genius. I, I Thanks, agree. Joel. Not you know what? You guys are going to get three department. more lines in oh, the next episode. Wait, I agree, Thanks. too. Me, too. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> it sounded so bad. I've never... She's bright red. Because she just screamed. Does your neck turn red when you scream? Yeah. I, I, I bruise very easily as well. Let's see. It's not that easy to get human beings to turn on each other. Turn on her! <laughs> um, the extras really enjoyed throwing things at me, I have to say. Some of those hit me with a lot of force. We had a debate about that in the edit bag. I felt like that beat should happen faster, like a Simpsons beat. Like Joe, Just, <sighs> Joe, who sometimes loves like crazy, like broad comedy, like he has this rule about like the, he didn't want the paper to like fly in immediately. Turn on her! <laughs> but. Well, know. it's interesting. I mean, finding the tone of the show and what works yeah. with it, you know? Wow. Yeah, That's a thought. Yeah, well, this is the battle of the two awesome coats. <laughs> <laughs> this is where these coats go at it. Who you, wins? You improvise, did you improvise that line about the dirty bum, or did Andrew, did you write that? Or No, that came that? from the floor. I think that... Uh, I mean, not the floor, the, the writer's room. They, oh, okay. they brought it up. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what we call it on set. Yeah, yeah. the floor. You mean the <laughs> dirty floor? You mean me? No. <laughs> it seemed very Joel McHale, and this was early on in the series, of like, there's Jeff Winger, who is loosely based on an amalgam of friends of mine. There's Jeff Winger, who is the voice of the uh, dorky writer that created him. But then there's Joel McHale coming in, and, like, by, by the time you're watching this DVD, the character is really very much Joel McHale. Uh, with probably an extra emphasis on the pomposity and the narcissism, the shallowness. Or but... a dumbing down of that. <laughs> <laughs> or the, yeah, Just a turning, the, turning it down. <laughs> but that was like, because I, I remember that moment, like the dirty bum thing. It's like, well, that's not something a protagonist says. Right. But then realizing that we've, we've, oh, we've successfully created a very flawed character. you got to commit to that. He's, he's, I, he's very how, full of himself. So you guys, can, I don't even remember. It I came, don't... there was an issue. We had a couple jokes that we were trying to do there. And Neil came back from the from the writers' room with that mm. joke that they had, they had concocted. Right. The brilliant writers, and this this story originated from Hillary Winston. Pitched the in, in pre production in the first year, she came in almost with fully formed Brit cheating storyline, the A story she uh -huh. sort of had had huh. had with her. Yeah, and we we at some point all together. I think it was some. I don't want to take credit for something that didn't originate in my head, but I always had that sort of like pool image in my head that the, the the idea of having to do a trial next to a pool yeah but I, I at some point it that gained traction with other people like joe russo for instance if he says we're gonna shoot next to a pool you know it doesn't matter if that's gonna be really expensive or difficult we're like gonna he, make it happen. unlike dan Harmon, like like geez he's like let's do that to pull those it's a good idea that's why it's important to work together if you if you think differently because if you have a unified front because look at this <laughs> this is this pool. Long Beach. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> it was a long, long day. Long that was a long day. And in Allison Brie was there for 16 hours and worked and for like a half an hour. Yeah, oh, that's true. She did nothing. Oh, and, and, be, and she's cut out of the episode. Yeah, she got yes. cut out. Because I, I, and I came to the set with my laptop and I said to Andrew, I don't think these scenes are working right. And he's like, okay, all right. Look, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew's a very, you wouldn't think he was a writer if you saw him on a bus. He looks he looks like the protagonist of Blue Mountain State. <laughs> yes, he does. Uh, and, uh, it, but he's a very, very able-minded uh, writer and a very positive guy. And he, that was my first experience with on-the-set writing, really. It's so, like coming in and going, ah, I've got a real bad feeling in my stomach about these scenes. And so all these pool scenes, like Andrew and I sat down in the bleachers and we went through them with our laptops. And, we, and, and, and the first AD was printing them up on a flash drive and... And, uh, Which was pretty intense because we'd already started shooting, yeah. and we had to figure yeah. out we had to shoot <laughs> something because we not, were all in Long Beach. Yeah. It's not the way you want to work. <laughs> it's not the way to stay on budget. And it's, that man did that dive about thirty times. Yeah. He was one of those. 
Okay, so these scenes, That's... you can hopefully see them on the DVD. There's original versions of these that are much, well, I wouldn't say much, but they're darker. And that's the reason they were reshot is because NBC, not to throw them under the bus or anything, but because these things just happen, maybe they had a valid point, they felt that these scenes were, in their original form, too dark. What I was trying to do is, like, like find the Pierce character that Chevy could be happy with, that I could be happy with. Because I remember he would always show up and go, like, I want to be Fletch. I want to be Fletch. I was like, well, you're not Fletch. You're a buffoon in this show. Like, the joke's on you. I warned you about that. And he was like, I want to be sexy and Fletchy. <laughs> and then and I was like, okay, what's the, what is the happy medium there? Well, it's a guy who, like, he's angry. You know, he's like, he's not, he's, he's, he's not getting what he wants out of life and stuff. And so the, these original scenes, like, he's very abusive towards Annie. And then she gives him a dressing down. In, in her comeback, you know, in her final scene, she tells him, you know why you have seven wives? You know, what? because everybody that gets close to you, uh, you you shit on. Right. And that's why, and now I'm one of those people, and I accidentally, like, thought you were a decent guy, and now I'm out of here, too, kind yeah. of thing. And that's just the way it is. And she, like, really, she's his first friend, you know? Um, and instead, we have this Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> Not that Malcolm is not a great show. No, no, no. Andy, we love that show. Andy Bobrow, Andy Bobrow one of our writers, from... works on that show. Oh, it's fantastic. If you're watching the show and you work on Malcolm <laughs> in the Middle, I, we really want to <laughs> give you props great. for yeah. it's great show. inspiring that scene that we just okay, watched. Okay, Ken Jong's calf is <laughs> spectacular. You'll notice the human being posters in the background is in his <laughs> swimming form. I get great joy out of that. The art department did a hell of a job on this. It was crazy. There were um, large cockroaches crawling around this Huge, entire pool the area. The biggest cockroaches you have ever seen. They were huge. They were extraordinary. That was that was my idea to crawl up there. <laughs> I don't, Adorable. I don't, thanks. It was my idea to add the thing about your boots because at the time I really wanted to. You were upset about the fact that I was wearing heels. I have a problem with dishonesty, and I felt like if your character's short. Yeah. But it's like, why would Britta wear high heeled boots? At the time, I was like, she's supposed to be this like character that represents like practicality and honesty and all this stuff like why is she stumbling around in these stilts <laughs> that's um, just because i'm un i'm not good at walking in heels the stumbling thing was happening right but was, i wanted to address was, that and make it part of your character yeah. but it was also yeah in this episode we were addressing britta really for the head on for the first time yeah. and it's one of those yeah. she was be flawed exactly yeah that's the real question what's going on we're not we weren't talking about we were talking about boots for a while we're getting i'm getting cross-examined these act breaks were all reshuffled in the edit bay this is even though this is one of my favorite episodes for a million reasons, it's one of my least favorite for sort of po political reasons. I don't know, pro post-productive reasons. It was just <laughs> nothing but conflict and 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 second guessing and overcorrection and the the act breaks were that was supposed to be an act break, yeah. the scene you just mm -hmm. saw, and then in the edit bay they like just reshuffled the whole thing and. Uh, when I say they, I mean we. I mean, it's not, it's not like there's an enemy outside the camp. It's like, it's just, the whole thing is just sort of a mess. You're like, you're getting your, you're trying to get your foothold. You're trying to learn to work together. Uh, we being the network, we being me, we being our own people. It's like, you, you, there's too, there was too much, uh, not enough confidence. Well, I will say for Joel and I watching Ken John. Oh Jim Rash gosh. and John Oliver improv See, oh for 16 hours gosh. was like <laughs> being at a comedy show that yeah. never ended. It was just like incredible to sit there at that table and watch them. The this comedy scene, power. I love yeah. this yeah. scene. We wrote this too, right? Like just sort of on, on the set. That day. Oh yeah. my God. It's like we just knew that we and had you to had get like them. 10 minutes before you were being thrown out of the yeah. pool. <laughs> well, and with your big dramatic scene, yes, which is coming up. two takes that... per shot on that scene. Yeah, these were all done. This scene and the and the one <laughs> this, this one right there. Yeah, yeah. this is where they were. You they, did this like two takes, yeah. Gillian. Yeah. Yeah. And I was I walked out of there going, "See, it's fucking brilliant." I just have to go back. Um, but pool. I was drunk at the time. <laughs> well, I think that actually <laughs> enables you to see pool. my brilliance Seems more dangerous. clearly rather than clouding your vision. So it, it gives keep me drinking, skank my friend. Vision. <laughs> <laughs> but that's no, kind of, but it's really like I, th this was like people like. I think now, if you look back at the scene after 25 episodes, you go like, oh, I get it now. After we've done all this pounding on you, your character is like, you're the joyless one, you're the humorless one, and all this stuff. Like, looking back at this episode, this is so great, and your performance is so amazing. It's like you're 
you're a crazy person, kind of. <laughs> like you're too you're too real. So when you're on Gilligan's Island, you stick out. Like you you seem like Charles Manson to all these sitcom characters. But you guys didn't have a lot of time to do this. I mean, we were in the clutch here because we'd had a 16 hour day. Yeah. They didn't even light this barely. You know, Joe's standing there with yeah. a camera and he says, "Okay." Yeah. Now your big scene. Yeah, we did. We really did oh about gosh. two takes. Yeah, so then this, this went this way gets, longer than they ever. This gets turned into an act break, and it feels really awkward. That was supposed to be it was supposed to be the comedic thing of like, she's crazy, what? And then keep going. And it was really fun and funny. And but if you could have heard all the stuff she just told I'm just gonna nail myself to this cross. <laughs> I'm just waiting for uh, oh yeah Leonard yes. Leonard to drown. <laughs> yeah, upcoming we have the first appearance of Leonard. <laughs> Uh, and almost the last. I get credited with almost drowning. That's, That's the legend now. It the, was amazing to watch two people swim out with him, prop him up <laughs> until they called action, and then watch him sink about five yeah, inches. Yeah, they're like, let him go. <laughs> the story is that Leonard did 20 <laughs> takes of this busted line. For, he, uh, apparently, he nailed it on the first take when well, I was in Dan the bathroom. Was away, yeah. And I came back and kept asking for one more take. And the first AD at one point is going, there he is. You, he's going to drown. He's an old man. See, That's look, he's he's eating water. And then we used his first take, by the way. He did yeah, nail it. That's Richard Erdman. That's his name, right? Yes. yes. If you IMDb him, he has but he was in Gunsmoke. He has he yeah. has had shows. He's directed he, he, the Van Dyke episodes, yeah. I he's believe. He's a museum of television history. Yeah. Wait, that sounds... You can't call a human being a museum. He's he's <laughs> he's living... He was like, Marlon Brando's roommate for a time what? when should, he first moved to L.A. We should be saluting him when he shows up on the he's set. He's incredible, and he's always in such a good mood. He's like, oh, wait. He's so happy to be there. He's always oh, wearing a terry cloth a bucket hat. And then if you adjust him, he goes... <laughs> 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 and then he grabs the actress's asses. No, I didn't. But we love it. <laughs> yeah, you're honored. You're yeah, like, it's right. like Dick Van Dyke. Dick Van Dyke, Dyke touched that hand. <laughs> Slap me harder so I can absorb some of the power. Uh, oh, I love this. I loved watching Pootie shoot that. He insisted that they draw his eyebrows in <laughs> to give him a more alien look. <laughs> he looks I like thought. Chainsaw from Summer School. <laughs> Stop. Stop doing this right now. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm not an alien. <laughs> Have we talked about the fact that Donald almost always wears stripes? No. no. I never noticed. This scene, this scene was reshot, too. And yep. I'm not even... Like, it was because the storyline seemed implausible that Donald actually believed he was an alien, so we changed it to Donald is put off by the amount of... It became a very complicated <laughs> idea. <laughs> Again, it was early in the season yeah. when you're finding tone you know yeah. it, troy could believe that someone was an alien i think uh, yes now we know troy well enough to probably go for that storyline yeah. you know i think what happens in the beginning of tv seasons is or on a, a freshman show is everybody has the correct uh feeling that it's their job to save the show right mm. and so you have a pile up at a four-way stop with your collaborators of like well wait a minute you're all right everybody's right it is everybody's job to save the show but but the problem is you got to do it with everybody That's you guess right. you get a signal and you got a gesture and some and then sometimes still you step on the gas at the same time um it just naturally over time you're all, you everybody learns to uh what what the what the show is because you see it on tv right. 22 you times. get to see where, where what works and what doesn't but early on you think you're fighting you, you think you're writing the constitution and and, and if you do it wrong <laughs> there's going to be an amendment in there that makes dogs blue you know and and uh you you, you everybody's thomas jefferson yeah. chevy loves playing the piano yes very good at it. Very good at it. Put him in front of one, and he's a happy man. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can shoot scenes quickly. and But the... not in front of a keytar. I should... <laughs> in, in spite of being what I call the watered-down versions of these scenes, we have very talented writers whose job it is to water them down. Liz Kakowski wrote, I think, this monologue that's based on her own life about uh, the cheerleader thing, right? Didn't she? I think that might have been Hillary. Oh, as well. crap. Or a combination of the two. All right. All women are the same to me. Yeah, well. True. But the, 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 aren't they all the, the same? cheerleader thing? It's a, I love specificity. I love backstory. I love I love that stuff. I think that's really funny that you learn all this stuff about her. Um, how did the Bruce Hornsby thing like originate? How did that? I think somebody in the room got the name of that song wrong, and we said, "Oh God, what if Pierce thought that was the name of that song or whatever?" And then we and then we sort of. Uh, 
I remember Damn, we yeah. said that's just the way it is, and we went, oh, well. That's we wanted to create as like a runner that he he plagiarized Bruce Hornsby. Did you? Tr- we tried song. to get Bruce Hornsby, yeah, and, we, and we offered Bruce Hornsby is supposed to come up in the finale and, and deck. And then the line was right. supposed to be, "Hi, I'm Bruce, Bruce Hornsby, and, <laughs> and this is the range." And in the range, and hold up his fist, fist <laughs> and punch. Cheers. <laughs> Uh, and, and Hornsby, if you're listening, you got a second chance, man. Come We'd on still back. like to have you on. on. Oh my God! Why wouldn't he come? Is he busy? I'm gonna. I would like to think he's bashful, and I, I'd <laughs> like to lure him into. Is he still touring? Please Twitter. Do that Donald for Spider-Man campaign with Bruce Hornsby. Yeah. Bruce Hornsby for Spider-Man? Um, Luis Guzman <laughs> posed for the statue. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. yeah. How much does he get paid every time we show the statue? I don't know. You have to work out a very specific deal. Oh. With a, but, yeah, Luis Guzman, thank you for your likeness. And uh, I asked, originally asked Mark Hamill. I got an awesome letter from Mark Hamill who, who, who said simultaneously... I can tell the joke would be on me, so I don't want to do it because I still I don't yet want to resign my entire identity to, <laughs> to being Luis, to, Luis Guzman. Yeah, well, to, <laughs> well, Luis Guzman is a character. Uh, I don't whatever. Right, but but, but somehow they, it signified something else to Mark. But it really, really your letter. It really made me love Mark Hamill. Few people can say no. I don't want to be made fun of without coming off like a dick. Yeah. <laughs> and Mark Hamill still is like, I love your show. It's awesome. Like paid me all kinds of amazing compliments and like what did you say? I mean, it's a reasonable. And, I mean, it's a very and, good answer. And revealed an incredibly high IQ about, like, like, like he's like, well, I know, I, I get what the gag is with the idea right. of Mark Hamill being in the middle of the court community guy. college. Thank you for listening yeah. to us talk about television. And now television. Luis, Luis Guzman knows he was second. Oh. <laughs>